Hey, what's going on ladies and gentlemen, I'm Chip here once again, and I'm Sylvester here, we are back from the Maxi Toys, and welcome back to my last play of New Super Mario Bros. U for the Nintendo Wii U. So last time that we actually fully completed Peach's Castle and managed to kick Bowser's butt, including Bowser Jr. as well, as well as for the likes of that, that we actually restore Peach's Castle once and for all. And today for this episode, we're about to begin the special world in the game in New Super Mario Bros. U. Because just like how it does in New Super Mario Bros. Wii, after when you beat Bowser in uh, World 8, then you can actually access to um, World 9. And then in New Super Mario Bros. 2, after beating Bowser for the first time around, that's how you actually access to World, e uh, World Star. And then in Super Mario Galaxy 2, that you can only access to World S in uh, Super Mario Galaxy 2 after beating Bowser. And then in this game though, we actually introduced into this special world in the game known as Superstar Road, which is essentially equivalent to World 9 in New Super Mario Bros. Wii. So, um, it's basically not a long world throughout, it's just basically a shape like a star. And also, you can judge it by the fact that we actually have, uh, four item shops on the, you know, for your disposal this time around, as opposed to in New Super Mario Bros. Wii, that in order to actually get toad houses in, um, in the road, uh, World 9, is that, again, you need to get one of the digit numbers, assuming if you finish, um, the level while saving a toad. Alright, so here we go with Superstar Road Dash 1, Spine Tingling Spine Coaster. And this, uh, immediately takes place in, um, a complaint, and just like how it does it in, um, uh, World, uh, World 9 from the Super Mario Bros. Wii, there's gonna be plenty of times when, um, in some of these levels in, uh, well, um, Superstar Road takes place into this, um, specific, uh, worlds based on that we've actually been into so far. Like, for instance, the first level in Superstar Road takes place in Acorn Plains, which makes sense, because even then, the Acorn Plains was essentially the first world in New Super Mario Bros. U and stuff. And, uh, but this level right here is that we have ourselves a spying coaster returning from, um, Rock Candy Mines. And as far as at this point, folks, is that, as far as at this point in time, that uh, the game will start to get even a lot more challenging in, um, Superstar Road. So even then, uh, that, um, yeah. And also, uh, and also, similar to how it does in New Super Mario Bros. Wii, in order to actually access to these, um, levels, be sure you need to get all the star coins in Pearl World. Because just like in New Super Mario Bros. Wii, is that um, if you don't get uh, um, all the star coins per world, uh, you won't able to play them unless if you collect all the star coins. If you can see on the um, during the last video that we actually got all the star coins in Peter's Castle, and then while well, the cutscene actually triggers, when that means is that it actually opens up the um, the eighth level in um, Superstar Road. In this case, that it will actually just uh, opened up. So yeah. So for this level, it's pretty simple and also kind of tricky at first, because even then though, you have to dodge a lot of fuzzies and some all about timing for that as well. So even then though, if you time your, um, quick dodges and all that kinds of stuff, then you should be able to deal with this no problem, especially if you have Fire Flower with you. So, um, yeah, that's how this level works. And also, just like, uh, World 9 in New Super Mario Bros. Wii, no checkpoints, so... If you die in any point of the any levels in Superstar Road, uh, you're pretty much guaranteed you might actually go back to the start, so... Yeah, just be very cautious with these. Alright, so now let's move on to the next level, which was Superstar Road Dash 2, which was called Run For It. Oh, or in this case, Run For It. Now, you remember the, um, the DLC pack from New Super Mario Bros. 2, which was called Nerf Rack, um... Nerf Rack Pack? Now, one of these levels actually retains the exact same concept on this particular level. Before we get into that, actually, let's equip ourselves a PA corn, just in case of that this level is actually really easy with this um, power-up. And conveniently enough, though, is that this level takes place in the Cake Desert, because, you know, ice creams and stone ice, and as well as some sand all over the place. So yeah, this is how this level looks like. Basically, it's all about just get hitting all of these P-switches, because if you don't make it in time, you'll end up going to die. So, um, I don't know if it's just me, but I'm pretty sure there was actually an ultimate challenge to use the, um, the PA corn uh, without using their P-switch at, at all in this level, although we haven't tried this in our own, uh, on, on our own time, but we'll do that eventually. So, um, 
Yeah, this level's very similar in concept from uh, one of the levels from New Super Mario Bros. 2's DLC pack. I'm assuming in, you know, Nerve Rack pack, when you're gonna have to, you know, find the P switches, and then if you activate one of the P switches, then every single coin is turned into brick blocks and stuff, so... Even though it's quite a pretty tricky level, though, I have to say, especially the likes of how the Superstar Road is going to be the much more tougher world throughout the game has to be offered. So, yeah, overall it's pretty simple. If you actually um, use the PA coin like we do, even though it's kind of cheating, so... But even then, though, that, uh, it will be kind of challenging, as far as you can guys can clearly notice by now. Alright, so here we are on to Superstar Road Dash 3, swim from your life! But before we actually jump into that level, um, however, here we have ourselves the, um, the Toad Houses from, um, Superstar Road. And look at that! Do you see those icons? These icons very familiar to you? Well, that is because that, um, both, um, uh, the Penguin Suit and Propeller uh, Mushroom are actually returning in New Super Mario Bros. U. Even then, though, that appears in the late um, part of the game rather than early one. But even then, though, that's a nice little uh, welcoming um, comeback from um, the previous entry, or in this case, the previous uh, 2D Mario console treatment rather than the handheld. But anyway, though, it's pretty nice to actually get these two items back. So, um, yeah, what the penguin um, suit can do, although actually, let's go ahead and use one of our penguin suits in this level, so... In this case, that was uh, definitely a recommendation for this particular level we're actually going to. Swim from your life. Or swim for your life. And this immediately takes place in sparkling waters, because you know, level environment background. So yeah, um, if you're very familiar with the new Super Mario Bros. Wii um, penguin suit, it behaves exactly like how it does it in, um, well, the penguin suit from this game. It behaves exactly like how it does in new Super Mario Bros. Wii. He's still able to shoot these fireballs, and much like how it does it in New Super Mario Wii as well, that um, is actually a pretty much a definition of recommended power-up if you do like better swimming um, mechanics, in this case um, swimming controls, because you know, just like how it does in a frog suit from Super Mario Bros. 3, that um, even though that, that you can actually swim in multiple directions and stuff, so yeah, that comes in really handy. And also in this level though, the main premise of this level is that we're getting chased by a cheap chomp. It kind of reminds me of, like cheap cheap chase from Mario Party 3. Oh, dang it. Ah, oh, we got killed. So naturally speaking, we're actually getting stuck in this inside of his body any day. Kind of like Monstro from Pinocchio. But anyways, let's do this again. Uh, let's go ahead and use our flying squirrel um, power up for this particular level. And actually, let's go ahead and use our Star Man for this level. So hopefully, though, we can actually just, uh... Yeah, you know. Sometimes it can be really tricky in this level. Even then, it's quite literally the most trickiest level in um, Super Star Wars so far. It's because, well, all you, have, you can do is just basically swim from, uh, swim for your life off the Cheap Chomp. Because the Cheap Chomp will go after you. And also, judging by the fact that you can actually avoid these urchins, which are pretty possible to avoid. And also, that you have to avoid those bunch of uh, different types of cheap cheeps. And most of all, the, uh, the cheap charm. The worst enemy throughout in this level. Because, you know, if he eats you, you instantly die. So, just be very cautious, though, with this. But if you don't have a... What? No! What happened to my power-up? The fire flower in this case. I can't believe that cheap jump actually just ate our item. I'm guessing he might be starving for power ups as well. It was like, um, oh, I'm kind of hungry. I need some more likely um, eating um, these Mario power ups as much as I possibly could. But somehow we managed to do it though. We're hoping he's not going to eat our super mushroom though. That's the only reason. Probably he might have some power-ups for his dinner tonight. Including, uh, including Mario himself. And also Luigi, two colored toes from if you play this in multiplayer, so... And also this bunch of homing cheap cheeps are back from, um, sparkling waters. So even then though, that uh, we have to very, very, very carefully not get swollen by that. So if you don't have your Fire Flower with you, this means you're going to have to use some um, Cheap Chomp for most of the majority of this level when it comes to getting Star Coins and progression. 
Take, for instance, the third and final star coin, for example, that if you keep your fire flower with you, uh, you should be able to kill these urchins with their fireballs. But uh, if you don't have it, however, you have to deal with the cheap charm, because thankfully, though, cheap charm can slightly help you, but other times he won't able to help you, unless if the power-up pops up from um, the question mark block for a bit earlier points. But even then, uh, it's kind of tricky for the most part. Alright, so, now we're done with that. So, at the moment though, anyway, for Superstar Road, is that um, it actually contains 8 levels, just like New Super Mario Bros. Wii counterpart. But, there's actually more to it than that though, because as we mentioned earlier, that um, the, um, not to mention that you could actually have a, explore 4 Toad Houses this time, as opposed to 1, and um, during the New Super Mario Bros. Wii World 9, and also, that uh, the propeller suit and the penguin suit is now finally back. Uh, I'm really glad the, uh, these two power-ups will return, especially in this game's case. Because even though, though, it kind of feels a bit too similar to New Super Mario Bros. Wii, which I kind of like. But I digress, though. Alright, so the next level we're about to be hitting to is Superstar Road 4 Hammer Swinging Caverns. And can you guess what this wall is to uh, takes place in? Well, if you couldn't tell already that we actually did, um, done Frost, um, Frosty Glacier for as a fourth world, but truth be told, it is Frosty Glacier. Because, you know, it's based off of the, um, the worlds that we actually been into in a chronological order. So, we don't know about the new Super Luigi U, though, however. I think we might actually do it, like, an opposite direction, because, um, since Duffy was trying to deal with, um, well, obviously all of the eight worlds, including Superstar Road and stuff, but even then, though, that he might actually go ahead and say now that after when he's done Layer Cake Desert, I'm presuming he's going to be doing Frosty Glacier first and then Sparkling Waters afterwards. Because after all, that we actually did done that method from uh, New Super Mario Bros. U playthrough at this point. So, um, yeah, as far as we can tell for that already. So, you're probably wondering that unlike in Peter's Castle though, however, that are you exactly going to complete this in one video, or in this case, one episode? Uh, I don't think so, because uh, sometimes though, that the levels themselves can get really, really challenging as you progress and stuff like that, so... Anywho. So in this level's gimmick, that we actually have to deal with the returning ice physics, since at the actual Frosty Glacier's world, and also the swinging hammer, um, platforms, which if you remember those platforms from New Super Mario Bros. we I think it was in level 8-6, which is essentially the lava raising level. And basically, they have to deal with a lot of swinging hammer, um, platforms to deal with in this level. Well, thankfully though, there's no lava or anything like that, unlike in World 8 though, however, and also, you know. You get the point of what I was trying to tell you there. So anyway, um, let's talk about a few things about for our discussions for our, um, little session today. It's the fact that, um, for one, that, uh, we actually got ourselves a new Game Boy Color game, well, specifically downloaded onto Nintendo 3DS eShop. Since, after all, we still have our Nintendo 3DS XL at the moment, even though we're still doing, using that really, really well here. We're just hoping if that, um... It might be a bit fragile at first with this um, circle pad thing because if you play Super Smash Bros. 3DS, it will start to br um, break out, uh, like, like, even then it will just break out. And then also that um, the system has a clamshell, so even then it has like cli uh, three clicks. We're kind of worried of how um, if we accidentally do it too much, you know, just go a bit more looser than that. Oh, I remember this bit. When we actually first got the game in um, alongside with the Wii U bundle. In this case, well, we didn't get it a Wii U because we have to buy a Wii U sold separately. Because unfortunately, though, we haven't got the black version. Instead, we have a white version, which I found is kind of lame at first. But even then, though, that that was back then when it's um when it's 2012. But yeah, I remember that I used to screw it up at the very end because sometimes though I was a little bit too hasty at points. But even then, though, we died at the very point at the end of a level, though. Anywho, so let's move on to Superstar Road 5, Spinning Platforms of Doom. And this level takes place in Soda Jungle, because if you remember from um, the second half of the Soda Jungle uh, world map, that 
the level that was based on, it was um, Painted Swampland. But um, this is going to be look like a sort of jungle world, because, you know, you've seen this uh, visual style level like this before. So the main premise of this level is that we need to actually deal with spinning platforms now. So even then, though, the platforming can be a lot more tougher this time. So even then, we just have to be be very cautious and be careful, especially the likes of these or uh, the poison water that we don't want to touch by instant. So, um... Anywho, so let's get back into the, um, um, the discussion we can actually just uh, figure out. Oh, there's the second store coin right over there. It might be a bit tricky to pull up with because, again, spinning platforms, not to mention circular boo buddies. But, um, somehow we managed to try to avoid these as much as we can. We're hoping if we actually try to would be. But I digress. So anyway, let's get back into our discussion of, um, oh yeah, before we actually get into that... This is what you need to ground pound here, because if you somehow accidentally hit it from the head, uh, there's no way you can actually guarantee you can get that, but it's best to recommend it to you ground pound the, you know, the brick block that contains a beanstalk, so afterwards, and you should be able to deal with a couple of wall jumps in here, and then you should be able to grab yourselves a third and final star coin, and there you go. I'm quite surprised that we actually, um, almost halfway done with, um, you know, Superstar Road, including the, um, almost nearly the end of the game, as a matter of fact, including 100% completion. Now, as far as you probably wondering that, uh, how we can actually show you guys off the boost rush mode of how it looks like, well, we might as well say, I think we'll have to go for it, because even then, though, that, even then, though, that, uh, we might actually try to say now, oh, actually, I, I perfectly have to be brutally honest here. I think we're probably not going to be tackling through the um, boost rush mode because we decided to actually just to not showcase for that. Oh, this image looks very familiar and different this time. Yeah, rather than having Bowser, instead it's Bowser Jr. now. But yeah, pretty cool. It looks it also intimidating at first glance, as a matter of fact. Anyway, so we finished that level. Now let's move on to Superstar Road 6, which I presume man, that level is actually going to be called. Um, I'm very sure it's something to deal with, I think it was based off of Rock Candy Mines. It's called Fireball Cliffs, which, let's go ahead and use our Fire Flower for this level, because just for the sake of being that, we'll just have to go ahead and use that. So yeah, unfortunately for you guys, if you're being very curious to actually just to let us do... Uh, boost rush mode. Unfortunately, we can't do it though, however, this time around because even though it might be a little bit too much of a work for it, and plus, as a result from that, that um, the weeds, new Super Luigi U will be on its way until next month or something like that, and also a couple of Let's Plays that uh, the other toys need to finish entirely. So that's why we decided to not do boost rush mode now. And also, judging by the fact that um, in uh, Sonic Colors, that um, Specifically, back in 2015, that um, I and Devi originally planned were about to be just to deal with um, Game Land Showcase. But unfortunately, due to the time length, especially a bunch of um, Let's Plays they'll be doing, including yourself, that's I'm running out of time for it. So that's why I have to do the same thing as it does it for, um, you know, for this game's um, Boost Rush mode. So sadly, we can't show you that. I know we love to, but it's just the fact that we just want to move on to the next, um, probably the last, um, New Super Mario Bros. Um, game, uh, Let's Plays wise, in this case, the marathon of New Super Mario Bros. games. Even then, as, as far as at this point in time, that we even purposely almost, uh, trying to get all these Super, New Super Mario Bros. games done as much as we possibly could from, um, season by season. Like, you know, New Super Mario Bros. DS we done, it was actually in, um, winter 2016 from january to february and then in spring new super mario bros wii from uh, march to april and uh, may and the new super mario bros 2 was on summer in um, june july and august but now we can have we hopefully we can get this game done until i think at this point in time that since we actually started this in september but then hopefully we can end this playthrough off in this case this last playoff in october yeah, no delays or anything like that, so even then though, it's just a pretty simple, straightforward, um, continuation on this playthrough for, as far as this point, so, yeah. 
So yeah, you get the idea. Alright, so the main premise of this level here is that there is way too many fire bars, as you can see, rotating on screen. And also, there's going to be a lot of emphasis on dodging fire bars as opposed to, you know, some other stuff like usually it just happens like this. So, um, yeah, there's going to be a lot of dodging stuff and it's usually it just all sort of like that. So, it, it kind of felt really difficult, especially in situations like this, especially the... The fire balls, in this case, three fire bars attached together. It's even then, though. Oh, by the way, if you die at the end of point of the level, you have to restart the whole level again because, again, no checkpoints. I don't think this uh, getting to the top hole of top of the flagpole isn't worth it for me, so I'm just gonna have to bypassing it. So, just to be safe, you know. All right, that does it for that, and we only got two more levels left for star coins and these two levels themselves. In this case, six of them left, and yeah, that's about it. But before we actually end things off though, however, let's go ahead and grind ourselves some um, power-ups real quickly. I think we'll have to go for the propeller uh, mushroom. Even though we'll showcase the propeller uh, mushroom until um, the next video, so even then, or in this case, the final video of this let's play, so even then, we'll actually do that as far as I was resolved. So yeah, you get the idea. So, and now the, um, you know this some Baby Yoshi mini game on the item shop? Um, that can get a lot more difficult this time because, uh, now you have to deal with the Bowser, the, like, two Bowser icons to focus on. So, uh, as usual, you have to focus on the Toad one specifically. And also, one more thing before we actually end things off is the fact that, much like any other new Super Mario Bros. game, that, uh, you actually get an option to, um, to save at the any time you wanted to this time around, rather than actually have yourselves a quick save. So, you know, just like I does in the previous New Super Mario Bros. games at this point. So, uh, yeah, you get the idea. So, um, yeah, we're gonna have to end things off here. So next time, we'll let's play New Super Mario Bros. U, is the fact that we're gonna finish it up with, um, Superstar Road, and also the Let's Play itself, like, showing you some extra bits and bobs and stuff. Like, uh, we're going to be talking for Lakitu, 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 and Pendulum Castle. <sighs> oh boy, where do I start with that level? Anyway, see you guys next time. Later, fellas.